What's up everybody? Today we're going to go over importing media on Final Cut Pro. Um, we're going to talk about creating your library, creating your event, creating your project, all the way to dragging your clips down to your timeline and editing them. Um, it's basic, but it's important. If you don't import your media correctly, it could possibly mess up your project, cause your hard drive to crash, or even cause damages to your computer if your computer is not strong enough. Um, we're going to talk about creating optimized media and uh, importing media as proxies um, so you can edit larger files more efficiently. So let's get started. When you're importing media to um, any program, whether it be Final Cut Pro or Premiere, um, it's very important that you have your external hard drive connected um, and that it has enough space. If you're editing straight onto your laptop, you're probably going to burn your laptop out It's going to be, or it's going to be very, very difficult to edit anything. Um, and if you use the, the size of files that I use, you won't be able to edit at all. So here's your SD card. Open up your SD card. Go to your media that you just recorded. Open up your external hard drive and create a folder. I created a folder here for a shoot on April 3rd. Um, and, you know, organization when editing any type of media is really important. So you do this just to make sure, you know, you have your media backed up just in case your project file crashes, your hard drive uh, crashes or anything like that. Um, so drag your media, select all of your media and drag it into the folder that you create. I'm not going to do it right now. It's going to take too long, but you guys get the gist of it. So after you do that, go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro. Once you open up Final Cut Pro, go ahead and close out any library if there is one that you have there. Um, and create. The first thing you want to do is to create a library. So create library. Um, make sure you title your library. If you do not title your library, once again, it's just poor organization skills. So I'm going to title this April 3rd Shoot. Very important where you save your project at. Um, like I said, you want to make sure you edit on your external hard drive. Final Cut Pro, for some reason, is default that it saves in the movie folders on your computer. Um, make sure you just select your external hard drive for everything to be saved onto. So then from there, you want to go ahead and create your project. Before you import your media, go ahead and create your project. Make sure your project is saved in the event that you created within this last library. So... April 3rd, 2019, it's saved correctly. And I, make sure you title it as well, Good Organization Skills. I'm gonna title it April 3rd Shoot. So there, you created your project and this is your project file. Obviously there's nothing in it right now. So then from there, you wanna go ahead and import your media. So go to File, go to Import and Import Media. So um, usually if you have an SD card connected, Final Cut Pro will go directly to your SD card. If for some reason it's when you open up the file import button and you see something like this, just look over here to the left and select your SD card, whatever you have it titled as. So from here, select all the clips that you want to import. So I'm going to select here. I'm just going to hold sh the shift button and press the last one and it selects everything in between. Then from there, um, you want to check to where it is added, what event um, this media is being added to. So we just created April 3rd, 2019. So that's where it's going to be saved. Great. Um, make sure you copy your files to the library um, just in case, you know, Final Cut Pro does anything funny. Um, you don't want to leave the files in place when you import them. Make sure you copy it to the library. Um Audio rows, uh, just go ahead and, and, and choose automatically assign uh, IXML tracks um, if it's available. This uh, You won't notice too much with this unless you're editing. If, if you're editing video, um, this doesn't really matter too much. Now, what does matter is this transcoding option. Um, if you're editing large files, you're going to need to select both of, the, uh, both of these options. Create optimized media along with create proxy media. Optimized media creates uh, basically high quality copies for media um, encoded as Apple ProRes. So 
basically just creates a more efficient file for your computer to be able to to um to edit. Proxy Media basically does the same thing but at a, on a larger scale so it creates a copy of your optimized media um for smaller size files and it basically, you know, it helps you edit faster, helps your com- your computer be able to edit the files faster. Um, I don't like to choose any of these options, analyze video for balance color or anything like that. Um, it, when you choose that, it just Final Cut Pro for some reason just has a weird taste when it comes to coloring and it, it'll do a really weird thing with your image. So I wouldn't select anything on here. Um, close window after starting import, obviously for this, I'm not going to choose proxy media. Um, I'm only going to choose optimized media because um, my computer is able to handle the files that I'm importing. However, if I was shooting with a higher resolution camera, such as a RED camera, of course, I would choose create proxy media. So then from there, you just click import selected and let your computer import. Now, depending on how fast your computer is um, and how big your files are, this may take a while. Um, You know, when you first get into editing, as soon as you edit the clips, you want to click them and you want to drag them down to the timeline. That is not good to do while your clips are still importing. Um, It'll it'll mess up your hard drive. It could possibly crash your motherboard. Um, Sometimes it it adds a weird glitch to to the project in general. And when you're editing, it'll just even even after you let it import, for some reason, it'll just skip a whole lot while it's on the timeline. So. Like I said, make sure you allow it time, uh, efficient time to import, along with efficient time to transcode and analyze. Don't touch anything until it's completely done. And like I said before, make sure you allow enough time to, for the media to transcode and analyze. Um, it's going to do something weird. It's never really going to get to 100. It'll go up to 2 and 3 and 4 and go back down. To zero, but that's because it's going through each of these clips and um, creating optimized media for each of those clips, so you'll be able to edit faster. So, when the importing media is done, do not jump straight to dragging the clips down to the timeline because that will also, um, you know, make your computer run slow, possibly add a glitch to the entire project. Um, just be patient, wait, and allow this to finish completely and then come back and start editing. So once all your media is done importing, um, and once all your media is done transcoding and analyzing, then your media will be ready to be edited here to the left. Now, if you are editing something for a film, then this is where you will go through and rename your clips to um, scene one, shot A, take one, shot A, take two, um, and so on. Now, just for example, let's say you want to take this clip, drag it onto your timeline so you can start editing. Um, You may not necessarily want this entire clip. As you can see, the entire clip is two minutes um, and 22 seconds. So I would come, let's say we want the video to start right here. It's like a good spot. You press I for N, press the space bar to allow it to play. And then once it gets to a spot to where you're like, okay, that's what I wanted from the clip, you would press O out then from there you would drag the clip onto the timeline and your clip is ready to edit so let's say to this clip you wanted to add some color correction drag the color board item over here to your clip open the color board and let's say you just want to bring the exposure down a little bit it's a little overexposed boom let's say we're happy with it there and then from there um, you would like to add on letterbox just to make it a little more cinematic drag the letterbox all the way aspect ratio 1.85 border size 10 um and then from there you're going to see there's these little dotted lines here above your clip this means that this clip needs to be rendered now if you try to play this without allowing it to render um Usually it won't play through. You see how it glitches there a little bit and it skips. Um, My computer is pretty fast, so it's able to handle these type of large files. But other computers, 
If you do not allow the project to render, it won't be able to play correctly and could possibly mess up a lot on your hard drive, the project file, or even your computer. All right, everyone, so that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's simple, but it's important. Um, make sure you like and comment whatever type of tutorial you would like to see me do in the future, whether it be Final Cut tutorial, Adobe Premiere, iMovie, Photoshop, whatever you would like to see, and make sure you subscribe.